So I've travelled up to sunny Stockport today to find out more about this engineering company called Manufacture and Nelson. I'm going to be talking to David Baines, so stay tuned. Manufax and Nelson Tool Company uh, first started here back in 1949 and actually they started off, this was a big mill complex here. Um, there was over seven different little companies here and Manufax started just down there in a small mill and over the years um, the Rhodes family who owns it have gone and acquired the whole site here and we're now on six and a half acres. That's unbelievable. So when me and Paul actually drove in, I just thought it was this little unit here, but obviously you've walked us around. It's a huge compound that you've got and obviously Manufact and Nelson um, working together. How does that work? Well, what we've got is we've got two companies, but we've got one management team and we control all the work that's coming in. The reason that we've got the two companies and not one is just because of the accreditations that's with our blue chip companies. 100% and I think that works really well. So talking about your staff, what are your staff like to work with? How many staff have you got on site at the moment? We've got 76 people employed here at this moment in time. That's incredible. So I know as an engineer these past couple of years have been tough not only with Brexit but with Covid. How have you coped with all these, well not problems but um, opportunities as well that have come your way? It, it has been tough Chloe. Um, Covid has been very, very tough with us because we were mainly in the aerospace industry. Uh, we did see a big drop off in work. Brexit is also going to cause us some challenges, but we're here and we are going to be going forward and we're very, very hopeful for the future going forward. That's what I really like to hear, Dave. And looking around your company as well, I can see that everybody's happy, everybody's working and you train your staff to be the best of their ability. And how do, do they give you that payback? Is their work very good? Is, do you see that with them? Every member of our staff is absolutely excellent and we're forever astonished at what they can achieve and very proud of what they are achieving as well. So Dave, this trick behind us, tell us all about it. It's a great feat of engineering and I'm really interested. Okay, Chloe, well, this is a barrel assembly jig um, for the C-Series aircraft, or as it's now known as the A220. It took us over 12 months to build this. Um, it's got a, quite a fair bit of automation on it as well because what it's doing is it's allowing the wing root to sit in the middle of the jig and then at each end you've got the two barrels of the aircraft will be come towards the wing route where they will then get riveted together to the wing route. So you're talking about automation on this, so it's not manual moving. So coming from probably 20 years ago where it was manual moving to automation, how easy is it for your um, staff to be able to integrate this into them engineering? Well, on the automation side, we do subcontract that okay. out. Yeah, and because that is definitely a numerical control device and we get people in to do that. We just do all the mechanics here and then we do all the factory acceptance testing as well here before we ship this out. Obviously with that as well, we have to do the CE documentation as well, which we do and we do that for all our clients. Well, that's fantastic. Just subbing out that bit of the computer numerical control, but you being able to do the metrology side here, the yes. CE documentation, meaning you don't have to ship it backwards and forwards, is no. a great feat for your company. Um, you said it took 12 months. How many engineers do you normally have um, at one time working on this piece of... There would be around about five to seven working on this at any one time. So that's 12 months, five to seven, so that's a lot of man hours as well. Okay, so talk to me from the get-go. So you've just got the uh, plans for this bit of machinery. Where do we start and where do we finish? Okay, well, we start initially with the first uh, fabrications. We start with the biggest ones uh, and also the ones at the base level. So you can see here, you've got the main base level. So we'll start with them fabrications. We'll get them fabricated. We'll get them stress relieved machined, jig board, we'll then site them here and then we go on to the next level, we'll start with the next level's bases, get them machined, put in all the linear rails, fit everything up, then we'll start to get the metrology around it so that as we start building it up, 
we can start making sure that everything is accurate as we're going up. What we do is we also work very closely with our customers because what we make sure is that when they're designing this, they're designing in little packers so that we can adjust them to suit because obviously by the time, if we're only one thousandth of an inch out at the bottom, by the time we get to the top, we're a mile out. So yeah. we make sure that we de design into it that we can adjust it. Yeah, fantastic. So you're talking about aerospace industries and obviously their tolerances are really, really tight. So what sort of tolerances do we have on this piece of equipment? On this one, it's not too bad. We're allowed four thousandths of an inch. Okay, so that, that's that's okay, but it's still quite it's tight, point, isn't point it? One of so a millimeter. the relationship that you have with this customer has obviously got got to be really, really tight. How are they um, with you with the design aspect? Are they keeping up to up to date with it? Yes, yeah, all the time. We're working closely, and each time that there's any changes, we're talking back to the customer by, by MEQNs and we have a projects team as well that are looking after this so there is a one point of contact with us so our customer can contact our project manager our project manager then relays it with our production that's team that's exactly what you need isn't it and you yeah. need that healthy relationship so once we finish how does this get transported to the customer so once we've finished it's all been bought off by the customer here and they're happy with it then we'll start to strip it down we'll put it into a uh, crates for exporting if it's got to be exported or if it's got to be transported to somewhere in the UK then it'll go via our transport. So Dave we've just moved from the assembly bay into one of your manufacturing units. Um, for Manufax what sort of industries have you got your teeth into? Mainly we're into the aerospace industries um, but we're also diverse into all the other sectors. That's perfect. So you're not just in one sector, you're all around. Um, just a quick question. You do milling and lathe work. So do you have like 70% milling work, 80% lathe work? So how does it correspond? You're not far off there. Really? Yeah, yeah, pretty close. Okay. Yeah, the vast majority of it is milling work. Um, we, there is the lathe part, but we also have some uh, Genovoy's jig borers as well. So you're not just predominantly minted. I heard as well that you were speaking to Paul about your metrology. Do you have specialised metrology people? Are they trained on your kit? All our tool makers are capable of working the metrology. So not only can they do the inspection with them, but they can also then do the adjustments that are required on the fixtures if necessary. That's fantastic. So you don't get people in. That's great that you have the in-house capability to do that. So we've been talking about your milling machine. So you predominantly work on Heidenhine. How do you how do you see Heidenhine as a software provider? We absolutely love Heidenhine. Um, it's very versatile. All our operators use it, so obviously we've got the versatility there, if we need to, is to move our operators around to any of these machines. We're not dependent on one man. So Dave, the machine behind us, huge machine, I could probably fit this in my living room, dining room and kitchen. What are we making behind us? Mainly this is uh, being used for our very big fabrications. Uh, so for the aerospace there's a lot of very big fabrications which are going to be the floor bases and the main uprights but also we're putting through here the mold tools so we've been doing a lot recently in invar mold tools so very tough materials um, and it's been cutting very very well taking some very big cuts off so dave talk to me about some of the materials that you're cutting here obviously you're not just cutting aluminium are you no we do cut aluminium uh, but we're also cutting here the, the mild steels, stainless steels, um, Invar, which is the heat resistant material, and we're also doing the Incanols, Hastelloys, very tough materials as well. So you're a, you're, you have manufactured an all round great company, so thank you for speaking to me today. You're more than welcome. Thank you, Chloe.